according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to have the best seats in the synagogue and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put put in two small copper coins, which which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Dear siblings of Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, the Creator of everything. Jesus, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for your words, John. And choir. I love that anthem, which is a joyful expression of giving of ourselves which is what it ought to be. And I noticed that the arranger, Mark Cedio, is a longtime friend of ours, and he is just as joyful as that anthem is. Giving as a joy. That's what Audrey and Russell did. And I remember, still, during the last week of Audrey's life, she said, Pastor, who's coming to Bible study? And then she said, why aren't there more people in Bible study? Because she found her joy in Jesus, in studying the Word, in knowing Who's got her back? And God had Audrey's back for more than 99 years. This isn't a eulogy to Audrey. It's a word about God taking care of those who need God. And don't we all? Our first reading this morning was from First Kings, and First and Second Kings and First and Second Samuel have some of the best stories in the Bible. In this story. The Lord is speaking through Elijah the prophet, E-R-O-P-H-E-T. And sends the prophet during a famine to go find a widow in Zarephath of Sidon. Now, I don't know about you, but for many, 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 many years, I would gloss over the words that were place names in the Bible. Like, oh, widow somewhere, wherever. 
But places make a difference. The story about Elijah and this widow <clears throat> is a story of sacrifice. Elijah goes to the woman that God directs him to and says, bring me some water. Which I remind you, there was no running water. It was an effort. And Elijah just assumes she will because I don't know, he's acting on the word of the Lord. She brings him water. And then he says, make me a little cake. Feed me, please. <coughs> and the woman says, I have nothing but this little bit of meal. Probably just ground grain and a little bit of oil. But she did as the prophet asked. She fed him. She made what she thought was her last meal for herself and her son. <coughs> and apparently, because of that generosity, that sacrificial gift. That meal never ran out. The grain never ran out. The oil never ran out. And she and her son survived a terrible famine. It's a wonderful story. But I want to read something to you that our Bible study group came across just this Wednesday. You see, Zarephath is not anywhere close to Nazareth. And Jesus was in his hometown. And Jesus announced in his hometown temple who he was and who had good news because of who he was. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor which in Bible talk is a jubilee, a time when all debts are canceled. It's good news for those who are burdened by debt. And he rolled up the scroll and said, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And everybody spoke well of him after that for about a minute. And here's the thing. People wanted him in his hometown to be doing the same miracles he was doing elsewhere. Why can't you do it in your hometown? Bring us some of that snazzy stuff. And Jesus responds by saying, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. And now he's going to refer back to this Elijah thing. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. She was a foreigner. And he continues, he says, there were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were clean except Naaman, Naaman the Syrian, also a foreigner. When the people in Nazareth heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. 
they got up, drove him out of the town, his hometown, and led him to the brow of a hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. Because he spoke good news about a foreigner. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went on his way. God provided. The good news is not exclusive by any means. And so we come across our gospel. Gospel means good news. It starts out with, as Jesus taught. And this is a continuation of his teachings, where he has public arguments with religious leaders in the temple. Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplace. They devour widows' houses. And then he lifts up a widow, just like the one at Zarephath. She poured out all that she had. All that she had. <coughs> Two small coins. I have a widow's mite. I bought it at a antiques store once. It's a little chip of copper, probably about a quarter of the size of a penny. And it's not round. It's just kind of a pressed chip. All that she had. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods, is about where we put our attention. Where we put our obedience. Where we put ourselves. You shall have no other gods. And the second, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain, which doesn't mean you say the name of Jesus and you hit your hand with a hammer. It means saying something in the name of God that God never intended. They devour widows' houses. He's super religious. Jesus says there's a better way. The way is trusting God. Trusting God. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Let us in this time of reflection and renewal and stewardship think about what God values. Do our values align with God? Who came to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, to let the oppressed go free? and let them be kind.
consecrated, Lord, to thee. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, the one who is Lord forever. Amen.